Good afternoon. This is Anthony Chernowski, manager of the Practical Investor LLC. Today is April the 14th, 2009. And the topic for the day is a surprise finding in gold. This video is meant for instruction and entertainment purposes only. This is not a solicitation to buy or sell any security. A purchase or sale of a security may result in a loss of principal. Please consult with an expert advisor who may explain the risks of any investment you may wish to consider. You cannot invest directly in an index. Well, hello again. I just thought I'd change the topic uh, for a, a brief moment. And let's talk about a commodity that's very precious to many people, and that is gold. I am proud to say that last March, I called the top. In fact, uh, on one of the Yorba TV videos, if we can ever get hold of the archives, uh, I was within two days of the top. I did it again in July. I was probably about a week away there. Not bad. Uh, then I became a gold bear, and things did go down for a couple of months, very, very swiftly, very strongly. But something happened on the way to, to the forum. Let's just take a look at the, the gold chart for a minute, and let's explain what took place here. Well, first of all, if you can see here, uh, well, you can see the March 2008 top and the July top. We also had a lesser top in early October. That was just about the time that the market really sold off. And instead of going down with stocks, gold went up. What's going on here? Well, we see a decoupling here, and that's the issue that I think I would like to address. We can see the decoupling again going through uh, February and early March because gold was rallying while, while stocks were going down. Now we have a situation where gold has gone down while stocks rallied. What's going on? Well, what we have here is a formation. It looks sort of like a megaphone tilted downward. It's called a descending broadening wedge. There's a difference between that and a falling wedge. A falling wedge, of course, uh, is V-shaped going down. This is broadening out. It has an increase in volume as it goes down, which has an interesting implication. What it says here is that these declining broadening wedges are really consolidation formations and not reversal formations. In other words, this is saying that we're going to continue that uptrend that we had through March of last year. Sure enough, in about uh, two months ago, we broke out of the top and we declined back down again uh, to the upper trend line. Now, what's interesting with this breakout is we now have the biggest problem of, of all solved, and that is only 37% of these, uh, uh, as many as 37% of these formations will fail. This one doesn't appear to be a failure. It looks like, again, uh, it's just coming back down to retest, retest that trend line. So what are the implications? Well, according to Tom Bolkowski's Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns, he says that the average rise out of these formations is 46%. He says you can count on 20%. The average, though, is 46. And believe it or not, 40% of all of these formations actually have successfully uh, rallied 50% or more after the breakout. So we've got a fairly high failure rate, 37%, but a very high success rate and, and uh, return for those formations that are successful. And one of the things that he says is over 80% of the upside breakouts meet their targets. So let's talk about targets for a minute. This is kind of exciting because the first target that we have is 1,100. We've got quite a ways to go there. But uh, what we're looking at here is about a 63% confidence level that, we're, that gold will hit 1,100. In what time period? I'm not sure, but I would say in the next several months, probably by the end of summer. Um, other targets are 1315 to 1350. That's another reasonable target. And I've uh, discussed with another gentleman who's looking at uh, supports and resistances, and he's looking at a potential uh, of 1500. Now, whether it gets that high or not, I would say the higher the number that we're talking about, the lesser the percentage of success that it's going to happen. So let's just be real clear 
we're not, uh, I'm not talking about the moon here, but this looks like a successfully accomplished pattern. It's made its breakout. It's risen uh, more than 5% above the breakout level. That's a success. It's pulled back down to the consolidation on, on the trend line, and now it looks like it's ready to go. So for all that said and done, uh, I think that this is one heck of a pattern to consider, and it should be uh, a consideration for most people's portfolios. This is a pattern that looks like it could really go places. So I just thought I would share this with you, and uh, for those of you that want to have more information about uh, how the, the, this is going to succeed in the future, you can subscribe to my daily newsletter by looking online at www.thepracticalinvestor.com. Uh, if you go on the left-hand side, click on Company and then Other Services, and you'll see the newsletter description. You can also contacting, contact me by email at tonyc at thepracticalinvestor.com. I'd be very happy to, to respond, but uh, my time is limited. Uh, what I would uh, much prefer is if, uh, if you believe that this information is valuable, please subscribe, and we'll go along on the ride together. I hope you have a great spring, and uh, by all means, please do the right thing.